is a how-to episode on divorce and illiquid assets. Now, in another episode in which I go over tangible and intangible assets, I described a scenario in which Eric Wolf uh, and Melanie are going through a divorce and they are splitting up $10 million, of which 7.5 is a patent. This gets into the problem of having illiquid assets and how that can change a Colorado divorce in terms of a property division. Now, in defining liquidity, Investopedia online uh, says that liquidity describes the degree to which an asset or security can be quickly bought or sold in the market without affecting the asset's price. Cash is considered the standard for liquidity because it can most quickly and easily be converted into another asset. If, for example, a person wants a $1,000 refrigerator, cash is the asset that can most easily be used to obtain it. If that person has no cash, but instead they have a rare book collection that has been appraised at $1,000, they're unlikely going to find someone willing to trade them the refrigerator for their used uh, rare book collection. Instead, they will have to sell the collection and use the cash to purchase the refrigerator. That may be fine if the person can wait months or years to make the purchase, but it could present a problem if the person only had a few days. They may have to sell the books at a discount, instead waiting for a buyer who is willing to pay the full value. Rare books are therefore an illiquid asset. Now that Investopedia definition really strikes home for me because my father uh, collects rare books and my mother and I look at him and say, dad, you know, if you die, uh, you know, it doesn't really help us to have a uh, rare book collection because we don't truly understand the value of an F. Scott Fitzgerald uh, first edition or something else in lost generation. So, but really what our criticism of our father is that it's an illiquid asset. Other examples of an illiquid asset that really come up in uh, a Colorado divorce are uh, houses, cars, art, those sorts of things. Now, those are tangible assets uh, and they are illiquid. Uh, it takes a while to sell a house uh, and it's not something that is reduced to cash. So a $5 million house is not the same as $5 million in a bank account. Intangible assets that is arguably liquid would potentially be cryptocurrency. Now, illiquid assets uh, going on uh, an extension of the rare book collection would be a private business. Uh, stock options and restricted stock, which I describe in a how-to episode on executive compensation, are another example of an illiquid asset. Uh, to round out, we've got trust interests and pension plans. Those are illiquid assets that frequently come up in a Colorado divorce. Now, we don't simply chop everything in half, which is a common uh, misunderstanding for people in a Colorado divorce, because you can't cut up in half that F. Scott Fitzgerald first edition. If you do, then it reduces its value, but you don't go down uh, the house and take a chainsaw and cut it in half. You have to take into consideration the liquidity, the taxes, and the timing when you are dividing property. So frequently what divorce attorneys do, and uh, by extension the court uh, as, as well, is to look at who gets what in dividing property. And one factor is going to be the liquidity and or lack thereof. So in going back to our final example where Eric has a $7.5 million patent, there might be a circumstance, and indeed there's likely going to be a circumstance in which there would be a disproportionate allocation of property. Or Another consideration that the court is going to figure out if there is some sort of property division payment and Eric's going to have to be making payments to Melanie to buy out her interest or to offset her interest in that uh, illiquid uh, patent um, over time. And it may be uh, something that uh, court and Melanie are going to have to consider in finalizing that Colorado divorce. But for now, that is an overview of how illiquid assets can drive a Colorado divorce with property.